Have you ever wondered how a jet engine works? It's a lot simpler than you might think. I'll explain the magic. Coming up. Hey 74 crew, what's going on? If you don't know me, my name's Kelsey. I'm a 747 pilot. My channel, 74 Gear, is all about aviation. So whether you're a pilot or an aviation enthusiast, consider subscribing. In this video, I'm going to explain how a jet engine works. And you might think because the people who actually design them are incredibly intelligent, that it's a very complex machine. But in reality, it's very simple. There are three main parts, and I'm gonna break them all down right now. Let's get into it. The term jet engine is actually a very broad term. A lot of times when people are looking at a commercial airliner's turbofan engines, they say, that's a jet engine. And technically, it does use air to push the aircraft forward. So if you've ever called it a jet engine, technically, you are correct. I knew it! But these engines actually have two parts that propel the plane forward. In this video, I'm going to break down the core of the engine. And in a later video, I'll put it all together. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that I'm a huge fan of General Electric's 747-8 engines. Often I've heard people say Boeing jet engines, but in reality the engines that are on the 747-8 that I fly are actually made by General Electric. As you can see from this picture here that I took while I was doing a walk around on a 747-8, you can see there are a lot of different fan blades on this engine. Today I'm going to explain this core section here. The budget at 74 gear for fancy moving graphics is pretty low. And by low, I mean zero. You cheap bastard. Luckily, I drew the core of this very nice jet engine. And by drew, I mean stole off the internet. All of these dividers that you see are actually fans. And these fans are designed to suck and compress air. And at each stage, they are compressing the air more and more. If you've ever put a piece of paper on the backside of one of your home fans, you've seen the fan actually hold that paper against the fan. It's the exact same design, except a lot stronger. These fans are designed to suck in a lot of air. So each set of fan blades is sucking in and compressing a huge amount of air. And actually, one of the reasons that we turn on our beacon before we start our engines is that there is so much suction coming from these engines that if a person was walking in front of it, they could be sucked into the engine. And that would definitely ruin your day. This massive amount of air is pushed into this canister. This canister is getting sprayed from all sides by fuel. Kind of like this picture here. Imagine the bottle is the canister and all these toothpicks that you see are fuel nozzles spraying fuel into this canister of highly compressed air. The only thing that you're missing is a spark to make an explosion. When you introduce a spark into that canister, it creates an explosion. That explosion goes out of the back of the jet engine and it does two things. One, it pushes the aircraft forward, which makes it a jet engine. And if you introduce more gas, you have a larger explosion, which allows you to push the aircraft forward faster. So now you know that the first stage, the air is getting compressed. In the second stage, that compressed air is being introduced with fuel and a spark to create an explosion. So we've already covered the first two sections of this engine. Here is the last part of how this engine works. These fans that you see at the back part of this engine, they work like a windmill. Your standard windmill that's sitting on every hill, when the wind hits it, the blades start to turn. It's the exact same concept, except when the explosion goes out the back of the jet engine, it turns those fans. And you'll notice that these fans are connected to a shaft. And you might be thinking, wow, that's a big shaft. That's what she said. <laughs> and that shaft is actually designed to drive the fan blades on the front of the engine, which are sucking and compressing more air in. So as the explosion goes out the back of the jet engine, it turns these fans here, which then turn the fans on the front side of the engine to suck in more air. And more air is now getting sucked in and compressed and into this canister. So unless you stop the airflow, the fuel, or the fire in the canister, the engine will continue to run. Those are the three main parts of how the core of a jet engine works on your typical commercial aircraft. And if this jet engine was to be by itself, it technically would be called a turbo jet engine. I hope this gives you a good understanding of how the core of a jet engine works. In a later video, I'm going to explain how this ties into your standard commercial aircraft. So if you want to see that video, make sure you hit the subscribe and the bell notification so you get the alert when that comes out. However, if you're watching this months into the future, I'll make sure I put a link in the description below so you can click and find that video. 
In the comment section below, I want you to let me know, did you think learning how a jet engine worked would be so simple? I look forward to hearing from you. Until then, keep the blue side up.